All right, we're live. Well, hi, everybody. This is Klaus Sailors. I'm CEO of Family Promise. This is Klaus in 60 Seconds, uh, live on Facebook, where we take about 15, 20 minutes and have really, really thoughtful conversations with amazing folks. And we look at the intersection between what they do and what Family Promise does, right? Our ultimate goal is to help families with children overcome homelessness. Our aspiration is to change the future for 1 million children by the year 2030. And our guests all have different ways that their expertise, experience, and insight contributes to that. So today's guest is a wonderful follow-up to the show we did last week because it is our in-house volunteerism expert, Amber Young. She's our Director of Volunteer Engagement. And we're going to be talking about volunteerism, volunteerism for Family Promise, virtual volunteerism, the dynamics of a you know, just our changing world uh, post-pandemic. So I am really excited to welcome Amber to Class in 60 Seconds Live. Hi, Klaus. Hey, Amber, and that worked. This is the first time we did this, <laughs> me doing a single thing and then bringing the guest in, and Mitch nailed it. Perfect. Yes, he did. Um, so, Amber, it is it is really, it, first of all, it's just great to have you on board with Family Promise. You joined us in November, was it? Yeah, November. Okay. Blue by. My goodness, that's four months now. Wow. <laughs> um, and it's been wonderful. Right? This is such an important part of what we do, right? Volunteer. We have 200,000 volunteers. That volunteerism is so critical to everything that we do. So, you know, as I said in the intro, last week we had Stacey Houston on from Six Degrees uh, of Kevin Bacon. And um, she talked a lot about virtual volunteerism. So, you know, this, that, that was a, a big byproduct of COVID. And for us, it was... Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a permanent change for nonprofits as they deal with volunteerism? Yeah, I definitely see that because it allows you the opportunity to have a larger volunteer audience. You reach different people of different ages and backgrounds and groups because virtual volunteering eliminates that location barrier. You're not doing traditional volunteering where you're going to a space and having a location where all the volunteers meet. You're doing something just like you and I are doing with Zoom. Um, or you're on your cell phone doing micro volunteering and being a part of a social media campaign. So it just kind of shifts everything. Um, but the volunteer engagement field as a whole was kind of trending towards that because millennials and Gen Zs will make will make up the majority of our primary volunteer audiences from youth to experienced professionals. So because they're so tech savvy, we were heading in that direction. But COVID just kind of brought us there earlier. You know, that's, you know, that is a great point, right? I think we all recognize that um, the volunteer base was changing and their characteristics and the ways that they like to engage were changing. And we hadn't really, I think, kind of thought about, well, what does that mean? How do we do that? So what is your advice for nonprofits that are, you know, like, like Family Promise? I mean, you are mm -hmm. giving us you know, all advice um, about preparing for the future. Like what, you know, what should our affiliates be doing to prepare themselves for that future? A volunteer. Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. I really think the first step is creating new virtual volunteer opportunities that meet your current needs. What what are you looking for? What is missing? Uh, we even talk about board development. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm looking for this on my board, but I can't find it. Well, virtual volunteering allows you the ability to have a board member who might not be in your state or your county or your area. Um, so creating those that allow you the opportunity to have volunteers of different ages, skill sets, and abilities. So I would say Number one is creating new virtual volunteer opportunities and connecting them directly to your needs. Um, the other bit of advice I'd have is financially investing in volunteer engagement. Uh, a lot of times people hear volunteer, the, just the word volunteer, you think, oh, free, great, you know, and it's like, no, you know, you need to be able to put money into your program in order for it to be effective and successful. And one of the best ways you can do that is by using a volunteer management system like Volunteers for Salesforce, if Salesforce is the CRM that you use, or Volgistics, which is an online platform. And so these allow you the ability to track your volunteer data, pull reports, be able to see trends. And then that allows you also the, the time to evaluate your volunteer program and grow it. And if you don't invest money into your program, you won't be able to have, you know, that data to show you that. Yeah. And it, even simple things like investing in um, remote technology, like good right. webcams. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, and uh, and and you know, Zoom and other platforms, and 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 I know that we're nationally going to be investing more in LMS to to really um, create that great content, those great platforms for learning and um, educating 
uh, and you know, helping volunteers assess their skills and everything. Do you have, I mean, do you have any thoughts about that? Do you have any experience with um, with LMS type uh, programming? Yeah, we're actually I'm really excited to share. Uh, this is kind of the first time that it's going outside of kind of our little family promise bubble, but we are working on an LMS system um, for our volunteers. It's a volunteer training platform where they'll be able to log in and have access to all of our volunteer trainings. And so and it'll it really enhance our volunteer experience because one of the important pieces of being a volunteer is you want to know what am I doing? How do I prepare for this role? And how to have knowledge about the nonprofit that I'm helping and that I can, um, what can I learn about our families, especially if you're working with Family Promise. So we'll have a whole bunch of different videos and modules and quizzes and all that great stuff. And the platform that we're using right now is very user friendly. It's beautiful visually as well. And so I think our volunteers will really enjoy it. So I'm excited for that to launch in the near future. And I, I hope our volunteers like it too. I think they will. I'm excited too. I, you know, I, I haven't seen any of it, which is great, right? It's, it's good that I, there's things that happen in Family Promise that I'm not like <laughs> involved with. It's, I think the organization is much better for that. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for kind of coming and really helping us move forward on that. Because I think such a critical piece of, um, you know, just just keeping up the quality too, right? The, the more that you can um, make things uniform, you can get a lot of those training concepts out. Uh, you can really assure that people are coming in really well equipped to be volunteers. Uh, oh, Amy, Amy just chimed in. Amy is the uh, volunteer manager for Union County. She can't wait to see this tool. So, Yay. Hold uh, tight, Amy, we're coming. <laughs> so one thing that's really interesting about you is most people who work in volunteerism, it's kind of like you know, events, right? Nobody sets out to do that. They're doing something else and then they're asked to do it. And they're like, wow, I really like this. But you're different, right? I think you came out of the womb like, <laughs> thinking about volunteers, right? You, it has been your life's passion. So, so why, is, why are you so passionate about volunteerism? Yeah, no, you're a hundred percent right. And it really did start with having a mom who worked in the nonprofit sector. You know, I, it was ingrained in me at a young age. We're going to give back. We're going to volunteer. And it just was second nature to me, whereas for other folks, it might not have been. So, um, also all that to say, if you have a young child, encourage them to volunteer because <laughs> they might fall into this field as well. But what was happening for me when I was doing things like holiday toy drives or making Thanksgiving baskets is I just loved the feeling that it gave me of knowing that I can make a difference in someone's life. Like my one thing as my one person as Amber can help multiple people. And it was just like a priceless feeling. And then when I learned that volunteer engagement was a like true profession that you could do, I was like, sign me up for this. How do, you know, let me chart this path. And so um, that's what I've been doing ever since. And it really, it really is my purpose. Like, I, I know that this is what I'm here to do. And I love that I have the ability to really help volunteers on their service journey and help them make a difference now. So that's an even better feeling of like, not only am I still like volunteering in my life, but now I get to help other people experience that. So, yeah. I love it. You know, I think, that's so so important. Everybody at Family Promise has a passion for what they do, you for the mission, and um, it's yeah. I, and your passion is infectious. It's it's terrific. I'm just so excited about all the things that we're going to be able to move forward in the in the realm of volunteers. When you when you learned that that it was a job, did you know that it actually paid, or did you think it was a volunteer job? <laughs> Well, that's the funny thing is because a lot of times when people see positions that are volunteer engagement focused, they think, oh, there's no money. And I've had to tell people like, no, this is a real job. Or when I tell people my titles because volunteer engagement's always in them, they're like, oh, that's so nice that you volunteer. I'm like, I do volunteer, but I also get get paid to do a job. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, what are your chief goals for Family Promise? You know, what, what is it that you know, I think there's some challenges that we, um, every organization has, but we have um, innately with our volunteers and with our, our, the way that we engage, who we engage and so on. What are your goals for Family Promise uh, in terms of volunteerism? Yeah, um, one of our main goals will be diversifying our volunteer audience. I think that's really important. So that includes engaging people of different racial and ethnic uh, backgrounds, people of all different ages, and that includes millennials and Gen Z, really engaging that younger uh, volunteer groups. And then also communities like the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and a part of that goal is also making sure that we're providing a safe and inclusive space for those communities. So that's like DEI training will be a big part of that. Um, and for folks who might not know, DEI is diversity, equity, and inclusion. So 
all of that's really tied closely together. So that is a really big goal for, for me this year around volunteer engagement. Another one is really building out our virtual volunteering and skilled-based volunteerism program um, and working with corporations and nonprofits and professional organizations to find people who have different skill sets that will really help our families and also our affiliates um, with their uh, different efforts that they have. And as we kind of talked about earlier, technology and data is also in there as well. So we have a great tech team at Family Promise. They're fantastic. Um, and so Volunteers for Salesforce is um, what we are going to use and what we're going to hopefully have other affiliates kind of come on board with us as we roll it out as an application. And it's a really great volunteer management system that will help them track their volunteers, stay engaged with them. Um, and then, as we mentioned earlier, the LMS system, too. So that'll be really fun. And uh, another fun tidbit that I can share with Amy and everyone else who's listening is when you complete a quiz or a module, there's a very nice visual surprise that happens. So you'll Ooh. all have to wait. And, yeah, it's <laughs> nice. <laughs> so people will have to wait and see. But those are kind of the really important goals for this year. And there's more, but those are the ones that I felt like highlighting the most because they're extremely important. And I'm really excited about that diversity piece because it's it's important for Family Promise. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I'm, I'm really glad that you've made these priorities. These are organizational priorities, uh, all of them. And yeah, you know, we look at our volunteer base. Um, we need to be inclusive of everybody because everybody is part of the solution. And, you know, de facto, our volunteer base tends to be suburban, tends to be older, tends to be predominantly white, tends to be middle, upper middle class. It's all perfectly fine for any one of those individuals. But we need to identify how we can be involving the entire community because that's the only way we're going to reach solutions. Yes, um, I completely agree. So um, you talked a little bit about about growing up and and uh, being a volunteer. So what was what was your favorite organization to volunteer for when you were a kid? Ooh, oh. That's that's tricky. I, I I'm gonna this is gonna be biased because my my mom works for the organization, but I really loved volunteering with Easter Seals. Um, so it's an organization that um, helps support children with de de uh, developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so I was helping out in the classroom, and that was really fun. At one point in my life, I thought about being a kindergarten teacher. So I love working with young kids. So that was really exciting, and um, it really opened my eyes to you know, everyone is different, but we're all so special. Um, and I really loved that one-on-one -on -one experience I had with the kids too. I was able to build relationships. Um, my mom actually shared that there's um, a group of uh, triplets and they are now adults. Like they're 18 or they're 18 or 20. And I couldn't believe it. She sent me a picture and I'm like, no, no, these are, these are my babies from the classroom. She's like, no, not anymore. You volunteered with them when you were little, but you know, now they're, they're adults. So I, I loved that one-on-one -on -one interaction with them. And I think that's also something special about Family Promise that I was mentioning to a colleague is that I love the direct interaction that you can have with, with the guests and the families. I think that's so special because that's something that was special for me as a volunteer is having that direct connection and Family Promise provides that, so. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, it, it's interesting you say that because, um, you know, historically, if we brought people on board and they haven't had direct engagement with Family Promise, we do a lot of visiting affiliates and people doing all different volunteering. You know, the Uno with six year olds, the lasagna, the overnights, all, all that wonderful stuff. But with the pandemic and particularly, you know, you're located in New York, you mm -hmm. know, the area where we've really seen a kind of shutdown of any of the traditional kind of congregationally based sheltering models. So I'm looking forward to getting through the pandemic so that you can actually have a volunteer experience yeah uh, you know it must be must be such a weird dynamic for you uh to be you know taking on a new role in volunteerism when volunteerism was so kind of curtailed and um and changed yeah for sure as soon as the pandemic hit first it, you know it felt like it was going to be maybe a couple of months and i was like okay we'll, we'll adjust but then once it was like this can be ongoing my you know, complete thought processes. How, how do we get creative? How do we think outside of the box? So yeah, it really has kind of shifted where my kind of role is heading and, and where volunteer engagement as a profession is heading. But I think we were, we're all as volunteer engagement professionals waiting for that to happen again in that like five year, like in five years, yep. it'll happen. But we had to quickly just kind of work on our feats and virtual volunteering is that opportunity. And even though we are doing things via Zoom and video conferencing, it, it still does bring that person to person interaction. Like I'm able to see you, I'm able to see Darwin in your cage, in the cage. Okay. Um, he's 
featuring Darwin. Um, and so you can still be able to build those relationships. And, and I will say that Family Promise of Union County um, and all the wonderful work that Jalene and Amy do, they started a virtual volunteer program with tutoring. So they are doing, they have high school students and college students who are volunteering their time to help tutor some of our younger guests. And so they do it over Zoom and they have they go into breakout rooms and it's all of that. So they're still having that one-on-one -on -one interaction though, you know, they're just having to be socially distant, but um, they found a way to kind of bridge that whole person-to-person uh, -person interaction and it's working out great. Yeah, and you know, and moving forward, we'll blend the, the, the lasagna uno and overnights volunteering with all of this other. So it's not a question of like replacing, but rather, you know, forging something new and then melding it with the uh, with the old. Right. So, my last question for you is: um, you're uh, you're going to plan a volunteer dinner, and you get to have um, a certain number of celebrities and historical figures doing this with you in whatever way you want to do, whatever number. Okay. <laughs> who, are some, who are some of those folks? Yeah. Um... First top of mind for me is a young actress and activist named Yara Shahidi. Um, she is fantastic because she's really used her celebrity platform to engage, educate, um, and mobilize Gen Z uh, around things like social justice and civic engagement. And I've just been so impressed by her. So I'd love to kind of talk to her about that and where her passion for that came from. Um, and I think she'd bring a lot to the dinner table too. Um, I also would love to have Michelle Obama. Uh, she's personally an inspiration to me and I think she's done so many great things, especially for young people and feels like she can tap into all different age groups and um, has so much knowledge. She is, she is so, so smart. Um, another person, because I love music so much, is uh, I would love to have Stevie Wonder because I feel like he gives service in a different way. He serves us through his music and his talents. Um, and not only is he, you know, a singer or an artist, he's a mu musician and a songwriter. And just, I, I just feel like he serves us um, so well as a community. And then, Someone who I would say is a celebrity to me and to a lot of kids in Philadelphia um, is a volunteer that I worked with um, a few years ago. Unfortunately, he's passed away, but I would still love him to have, have him at my dinner table. His name was Nuncio Cali, also known as Benzio. Um, so he was really able to interact and engage with kids about science and make it fun um, and engaging for them all while dressed in a Ben Franklin costume at the same time. And so I just think he would bring so much laughter, joy, and knowledge to to that. And he was just so loved by by everyone that was touched by him. So I need to have Benzio at my table too. <laughs> awesome. Um, and uh, and we know that um, whatever you would serve, it would not include uh, Hassan Pfeffer. Oh, what is this? What is that? It's, it's, it's German uh, prepared rabbit. Oh yes, no, yeah. <laughs> I was and like, that was a big. Um, I forget what the, the Latin word for rabbit is to say. You know, the, the, but you're a rabbitophile. Yes, I grew up with rabbits um, as childhood pets. Everyone else has dogs, and we had rabbits, and I loved them. Our our first rabbit was named Peekaboo. She was adorable. Um, and right now, my mom has at home uh, our bunny rabbit named Buddy. Also, he was named after Buddy the Elf uh, from Elf. <laughs> so he is a cute little small black rabbit and he looks like Toto, but he <laughs> is a rabbit and he's adorable. So, <laughs> so with Amber, thank you so much. Again, we we're so thrilled to have you on board. You've already done so, many, so much great work. And um, you. You know, kind of wrapping this up, we're really looking at, you know, we're looking at this paradigm shift on volunteerism and as much as you know, there's there's concern about old ways of volunteer that uh, some of which may not be as feasible as they used to be, and certainly as long as we have the pandemic, there are it's really opened up a lot of new doors. And as you said, is is kind of democratized volunteerism, right? Because you could be working you could be working sixty hours a week, but with virtual volunteerism, you know you can you you can take your lunch time to volunteer as opposed yeah. to you know, having to go somewhere during the hours that they're open. So, uh, you know, I think you're really leading a, a charge on a new way of thinking about volunteerism. We've seen our affiliates do some incredible work and some incredible adaptations, but you're going to do so much to accelerate those and and just continue to, um, to help us achieve this kind of excellence in volunteerism. So, um, Amber, thank you very much. And everybody out there, uh, you know, look for some of these great things that Amber's creating that are going to come to an affiliate near you soon. 
Uh, and we'll wish everybody a wonderful weekend. Thanks, Amber. Thank you so much, Klaus.